for us, but it's Arch Manning. So we always talk about Arch. Arch is a, a big topic of ours. We're going to keep riding this choo-choo train until if we get Jaden, maybe we'll, we'll slide away from the Arch Manning train a little bit. Uh, but he visited Georgia this past uh, week, and it was his fourth total visit. I believe he's had three unofficial visits, four total visits, uh, and then one official visit. The only other school that's had more is Bama. Now, we know Bama has selected Eli Hoiston or Hoiston, Holston, whatever. So, again, one of those top 10 quarterbacks. There isn't many left. Does Bama really go after an Arch Manning now? And is Texas really going to be the play, especially with Quinn Ewers? Quinn Ewers is supposed to be the guy. There's a lot of people that are kind of hating on it. That's a five-star stud who came out as a perfect quarterback rating. It hasn't happened since, I believe, Colt McCoy. So, Quinn Ewers is no slouch by any stretch of the imagination. It's looking to me more and more each day that Georgia is a shoe in And again, with the spots filling up, like we said, the school's filling up, it looks like Georgia's going to be the, be the home plate, home, home he places, place he chooses to be home. Well, if you look at Georgia's quarterback room, they've got about, what, three to four or five stars just sitting there on the bench? I mean, <laughs> you, you look at, you know, you got Carson Beck sitting there, Brock Vandegrift, uh, a couple other guys. I, I, I can't, their names can't pop off to me at the top of my head right now. But they've got a deep quarterback room already. So even if they lose on Arch Manning, it's not a big blow for Georgia. And at the same time, as you said, Texas, they've got Quinn Ewers. Yeah, maybe you can add an Arch Manning to that. Uh, but as I said, neither school is in a bad position if they don't land Arch Manning. Uh, if you were to ask me right now, I would say Georgia, that's probably going to be the landing spot for him. But um, as I said, I'm not the biggest Arch Manning person. I, I never really thought his film was was that great. I think he gets the last name bump from a, a lot of the sites out there. But it's still a guy that's the number one quarterback in the class. He's rated at a five-star. Kids will see that. Kids will want to commit, as as we just discussed before. So now you're at a situation where, okay, is he going to go to Texas? Is he going to ju- go to Georgia? And if he goes to Georgia or if he goes to Texas, what recruits is he going to bring in that Florida now may not be able to grab? So it, it's better if he goes to Texas because he's not in the SEC with, with, the, with the enemy Georgia there. But sure. <laughs> it, it really, is, like I said, for Georgia or Texas, it doesn't matter. I mean, if even if they were to both not land Arch and he went somewhere else, does it really hurt him? So th- that's a good point. I, we, we, we've, we've gone back, gone back and forth about it, but we haven't looked at it from that perspective of like, look, these, the both schools won't really suffer that, the that 2023 year because one has a Quinn Ewers, George has a great, a great quarterback room. But the one factor I think in why everyone's poaching him so hard is because the same thing we just got done talking about with Jay Rashada is what he will bring with him. Yeah. A- again, cause it's all, it's all his perspective. Anyways, we don't know what, how he'll turn out or how well he'll do, but the guys that will flood in to say they got to play next to Arch Manning it would be bigger than any any Lambo that Hugh Hathcock could bring to the stadium would do. <laughs> it would it would be insane. Yeah, yeah and, and to uh, and to Shelton's point, uh, just sometimes having the hat on the on the table is is just what you want for the momentum. And right now, Florida has a hat on the table, from what it sounds like, at least at least close. Um, look, I. Our arch to to David's point, uh, I think he's getting a lot more recognition uh, from the name than he is from the performance, um, and he's going to be able to pick where he wants to go. But I, we'll see how well that translates. I, I don't know. I mean, the, the, the kid's been the kid's been in what private schools and playing in uh, middle to average competition. Yeah. So it's not like he's playing down in the muck, you know, down in, in South Florida, you know, in, in, in you know, uh, Booker, Washington and, and some of the some of the, the schools down there and just you have know, having to grind it out. Um, so it, it'll be interesting to see what he does. But I look, it, it'll also be interesting to see how that translates from where he is to the, the, the level of comp- competition that he has coming ahead of him. Yeah, and then some of those quarterbacks, uh, he plays in two ways. So I guess some of those quarterbacks, you put them in a better situation. Say he goes to a uh, a Georgia where they have a really good offensive line. I mean, they got great receipt. They got great everything. I mean, they've recruited, you know, top three every single year that they've been there. You put them in a better situation where you give them some protection. You give them some receivers. You give them a tight end. Maybe he thrives in that offense. You don't know that. I mean, you, you put him, as I said, he's a 2A right now. I mean, these guys, that, especially if you look at the film, these guys, he's way bigger than these guys. But also his receivers, <laughs> I mean, may not be that good either. But uh, from, from what I know, from what I've seen in camps, 
I just I don't see it. I don't see the five star number one ranking, but I, I'm not a scout and I'm not going to say that I'm a scout, but I just looking at other quarterbacks film in this class. And I honestly think Eli Holstein was the best quarterback out of this class and, and Alabama got him from looking at some of the film that I've looked at. But as I said, man, it, all that matters is if you get the five star quarterback, the commits are going to come. That, that's that, all you want. And that's I think it. something too. And, look, and, you, and you've watched enough football. You've watched enough football to know whether or not you feel like a kid coming out of high school is 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 the next it. And, yep. and look again, going back to uh, to the name recognition, is it that that's winning this kid uh, the the five stars, or is it the the talent? And if you can look back at just all of us have we we've watched kids come out of, of high school and we know what what looks like, you know, D1 talent, national championship talent, uh, even NFL talent uh, coming, coming, you know, uh, out of their, their senior year of high school. We can see that. We've seen it a lot. We, we know it when it happens. So, but you can also see when it's not quite there and you're looking for that, well, maybe it's a developmental uh, uh, project or something, something of that nature. And I feel like that's where, that's where Arch is. Something yeah. too that uh, we brought like, again, Arch Arch could come, and I feel like the expectation is going to be so high on Arch is if he goes to Texas or Georgia, they could essentially still lose that because like what you're saying is if he doesn't pan out to be, he's not going to live up to the expectation. I really don't think he's going to. So to be fair, but outside of the recruiting, they might not get exactly what they want out of him because the hype is so massive. I haven't seen hype behind a player. Uh, since uh, the Tate Martell had a lot of hype. He's getting a lot of comparison to... Did I hear that on your cast? Did you talk about that? Or is that some, another one I was listening to? Uh, I, probably, I probably took a shot at Tate Martell one time, but I didn't really talk about him. <laughs> okay. Because I, I, I've i been hearing a lot with the, he, the Arch being compared to that scenario because when Tate came onto the scene, he was supposed to be the guy. And then he hopped around, obviously. We know the history. I mean, he's, he's basically done. He's, he's out of eligibility. and never even really played it down. So... I don't think it's going to t- turn into that. I think Arch has a, a more uh, you know stable ground with the family that he's coming from. But again, the hype is so massive. It's like what? And again, these two these kids are going to be making so much money <laughs> off the rip without even playing it down. The motivation. I don't know, man. It's it, it honestly it could be more of a disaster than it could be good, too. Yeah, it, going back to the Arch thing. Like, what what if Arch goes to Georgia and he's who we thought he was? Maybe he's not that great. He winds up transferring. They're in the best position anyway. They've got the most quarterback depth out of anybody. So even if Arch was to come there and transfer, is it really that big of a loss to Georgia? No, no, no. And the crazy thing about uh, Georgia and Alabama, who are both teams that he's kind of been flirting with, it doesn't really matter what quarterback is there, right? I mean, so if, if you're if you're an Alabama quarterback. All you're going to do is you're going to hand the ball off to one of the best running backs in the in the league behind one of the best offensive lines in the league. If you're Georgia, because, you know, Kirby built his entire franchise or school off of uh, off of how Saban does it. It's the same thing. Like you have these powerhouse running backs and powerhouse offensive lines. You don't need somebody to come out and, and be. Peyton Manning, you need somebody to come out and be Arch Manning, potentially. Yeah, exactly. I mean, look at uh, Stetson Bennett right now. I mean, he's not the best quarterback. I thought he was better than JT Daniels, though, to be honest. I thought his decision-making was a little bit better. Uh, but look at him. I mean, he's already won a national championship underneath the the defense that, you know, he was – I mean, I, 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 I'll i say he, he got carried by the defense a little bit. I mean, there was times where he probably wouldn't have won games without the defense there. But, I mean, you still put him in a system that he can work with and that he can manage, and that's all you need. All you need is a quarterback to manage an offense if your defense is not allowing, what, less than eight points per game? <laughs> hey, Mac, Mac Jones has made a career off it. 